In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called counting protons and electrons in atoms and atomic ions. For this problem, you're going to get three different things. Some of them will be atoms, some of them will be ions, maybe you'll get a mixture of both. And it's got some information that's already been provided about these different atoms or ions, and you have to fill in the rest of the information. One of the things that you're going to be filling in is the symbol. That's referring to the, the one or two letter symbol. And then also, if it's an ion, the charge as well. You also have to classify it as being an atom or a cation or an anion. As a reminder, cations are the positively charged ions and anions are the negatively charged ions. And then you'll also be answering the number of protons and the number of electrons. So if the number of protons and electrons are not exactly the same as each other, so for example here we have 16 protons and 18 electrons, that means that we're dealing with an ion, either a cation or an anion. We do not have an atom. Whether it's a cation or an anion depends on what we have more of. If we have more protons, that means it's going to be positively charged and there'll be a cation. We have more electrons, which means that this is going to be an anion. We have more negatively charged particles than positively charged particles. So let's, um, since we know that it's an anion, let's go ahead and figure out the symbol. The two letter, one or two letter symbol of the atom or the ion is based on the number of protons. So we're going to use the number of protons to figure out the, the, letter symbol, the one or two letter symbol for the atom or the ion. 16 protons. To find that, we're going to go to the periodic table. We're going to find element number 16. It's a sulfur, so we're going to put an S over here. Now, since it has a different number of protons and electrons, that means that it has a charge. We have to figure out what the charge is. The charge is going to be based on the difference between the protons and the electrons. We have two more electrons than protons, which means that the magnitude of the charge is two. And since we have more electrons, it's a two minus charge because the electrons, negatively charged particles, are outnumbering the positively charged particles. For our next example, Alex is telling us that this is a neutral atom. And in a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. That's what it means to be a neutral atom, so we can fill that box in. As far as the identity of this, again, we're going to go to the periodic table. The number of protons gives us the letter symbol for the element. So I just need to find 49 that is indium. So here we would put I N and since the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, there's no charge. So there's nothing for us to write in the upper right hand corner. And then for our last example, we have B3 plus because it has a charge on it. It is not a neutral atom. It is positively charged because it's got that positive sign right there, which means that it is a cation. So what about how many protons and how many electrons? Well, remember that the letter symbol is what dictates the number of protons. So let's go find B on the periodic table. That's going to tell us how many protons we have. Here is boron. It's got five uh, protons in it. So there's that. And now we have to figure out how many electrons there are. The positive charge, this is telling us it's a three plus ion. So the positive charge is telling us that we have more protons than electrons. So however many electrons we have, it's going to be some number less than five. Again, that's because it's a positive charge. Positive charge means we have more protons than electrons. The three tells us the difference between the protons and electrons. So in this case, the difference between the protons and the electrons is three. That means we must have only two electrons in this ion.